those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength, and they shall. Welcome to Rhema Melbourne Online Church. Hello to everyone from Melbourne, Australia and around the world. Let me encourage you with these words from Psalm 29 11. Be on your guard to protect or control. Stand firm in faith to be unyielding and resilient in faith. Be courageous, not determined by danger or pain, but be brave. Be strong, have the ability to withstand regardless of circumstances. Great words from the word of God. Let me pray and commit our service to the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this new day, for your mercies that are new every morning. We thank you for the word that's going to come forth this morning and for the opportunity to gather together and worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Healing meeting, Wednesday, 3rd of August. Psalm 107.20 said he sent his word and healed them. So it's at Doncaster, 7 p.m. in person, Beaumont International, Doncaster Road, East Doncaster. Online, 7.30 p.m., you could watch YouTube and Facebook. Church prayer for Mill Park, next Monday, 7 p.m., new time, please note. How important it is for the church to come together in united prayer, just as they did in the upper room. All our online programs can be watched on Rhema Family Church Melbourne, Facebook and YouTube. What's online this week? Eagles Prayer every Thursday, 7.30 p.m. Sunday service, 10 a.m. Healing meeting uh, online, 7.30 p.m. Our Sunday evening services are now being streamed live at 6.45 p.m. on Facebook. You can watch live or go back and watch past messages. You go to www.facebook.com backslash Rhema Family Church Melbourne, all one word. You don't need a Facebook account to get onto the page and watch the message. If you live in Melbourne, you can always join our services at Doncaster 10 a.m. and Mill Park 6 p.m. Please like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you need help or prayer support, contact the church. The contact details should be below on your screen or you can visit the website raymafamilychurch.org.au or you can message Rayma on 0450-006-212. We appreciate all your continued support for Rayma Ministry. Enjoy the service today. Have an awesome day. Have a blessed week and I'll see you again sometime. Bye now. Good morning, everyone. We're just going to receive the tithes and offerings right now. I just want to encourage you with a, a couple of verses from Scripture. In 2 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul writes, and he says that all of the promises of God, all of them, are yes in Christ Jesus. What an incredible thing to think about. You know, all of the promises, all of the promises in this book, all of them in Christ Jesus are yes. They're for us. They're for now in Jesus' name. So uh, one of the promises that I want to pull out in regards to tithes and, tithes and offerings and giving you know, just as a by way of reminder, you know, our tithe is our tenth that we choose to give to honor the Lord just with any increase that we receive in our income or in our life. And an offering is just anything uh, over and above uh, our, our tithe that we choose to give into the church or give to a ministry that uh, we, we choose to joyfully give out of our heart for. So just one of the promises that the, the Lord gives us in, relations to, in relation to tithes and offerings and giving is found in Luke chapter 6 verse 38 and it says this is given it will be given to you a good measure pressed down shaken together running over will be poured into your lap for with the same measure that you use it will be measured back to you what an awesome scripture it just speaks of so much abundance but this is an awesome promise that has been given to us that when we give it will be given back to us again so much more abundantly that uh, we can't even hold it. There's a picture, you know, the picture I want you to think about when you think of this scripture is, you know, sometimes when you have so much stuff to carry that you've got to kind of fold your t-shirt or you fold your jumper over to put everything in that you're carrying because you can't hold it all in your hands. That's the, that's the picture. That's the picture of the good measure 
pressed down, shaking together, running over, will be poured into our lap. There's just too much to carry. And that's a promise that the Lord has given us in regards to giving. And when we give, he will give back to us. So there's the giving details on your screen, uh, the BSB account number. So we just appreciate your giving into Rhema Family Church. And we just pray you have a blessed morning. And thank you very much. Bye-bye. Well, good morning, family. Welcome to Rhema again. God's got a good word for all of us today. I trust that you, sh you enjoyed the word we shared last week. And we're looking at really part two of it this week, faith in the promises of God. And um, just going over my notes, it's always good. God's word is so good. It's so rich. It's so encouraging. It so lifts you up when you spend time in it. So it's going to be good for us to share this again, that we have faith in every promise that God has given us. You know, I was just looking this morning at number six, where it says, the Lord bless you. The Lord watch and guard and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine upon and enlightens you. He is gracious to us. He's merciful and giving us favor. Oh, Father, how wonderful you are to us. And we thank you that you hold us in the palm of your hand and you'll never let us go. And I pray over every person that's joining with us today at Rayma Melbourne Online Church. We call your blessings over them. Lord, we call the blessings of God to come upon them. We thank you for anointing us all with fresh oil so that we're able to see and hear and take in your word today. This word that's alive and active, this word that energizes us, this word that can have an effect on our lives when we bring it into our lives and begin to bring changes that you said we go from glory to to glory from strength to strength and I'm excited father to hear it, what people will have happen in their lives as they give themselves to this word in Jesus name so welcome again looking forward to sharing with you today and welcome to everyone in Melbourne in Australia and to all our friends from different parts of the world and we don't just call you friends we call you family we pray over you. We speak God's blessings over your life. And we're looking forward to hearing your reports of what God is doing in your life. Hallelujah. You know, God loves us and, and, and God loves to bless us. That's why this book is so full of his blessings. Everywhere we read, there's blessings. I know in my prayer time this morning, you know, going through Deuteronomy 28, and it says, you know, the Lord wants to bless us. We're blessed coming into the day, blessed as we walk through the day, blessed at the close of the day. Our marriages are blessed. Our children are blessed. Our workplaces are blessed. Our businesses are blessed. He said everything we put our hands to is blessed. So God wants to bless us. He wants us blessed in every area of our lives. And that's why he's always encouraging us into his word. Why? Because it's the word that comes into us that brings those blessings and brings those changes into our lives. So we go from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from victory victory to victory in the name of Jesus. You know, the blessings, what blessing, what promise has God been staring in your heart that he wants you to take a hold of today? You know, you need to think about that. What is it that keeps coming up in your heart? What is it that you keep going to in the word of God? Because that's what he's wanting to stare your heart with. And he says in Hebrews 3 and verse 15, he said, um, he said, today, if you hear his voice, hear his voice, don't harden your heart to his voice, but receive his voice, receive what he's wanting to share with you this day. You know, in the Passion Bible, it says, if only today you would really listen to my voice. 
So he wants us, he speaks to us through his word and he speaks to us by the spirit of God. And he wants to speak this morning through his word. And as we take hold of what he is saying, things can begin to change in our lives. So last week we looked at 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20. Remember it said the promises of God are yes and amen. Hallelujah. Those promises need your yes and they need your amen to them. He didn't put in the Bible the promises of God are maybe. He didn't put maybe next to it. He didn't put it in brackets. He didn't have it put in brackets in the word of God. So his promise to heal us is yes and amen. His promise to deliver us is yes and amen. His promise to supply our every need is yes and amen. And I believe right now God has a word for us and he needs your yes and he needs your amen. He wants you to agree with it and begin to to speak it out of your mouth. You know, that he is the strength of your life, that he will never leave you. He has plans to prosper you. I, that he hears our prayers, his eyes are over us, his ears are open to our prayers, that he gives us peace. And, and the thing we need to take a hold of is that he loves us. Glory be to God. He loves us and he's for us. You know, this is our inheritance. God has given us an inheritance through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, that word inheritance, it means this, it's your birthright. When you got born again, this is your birthright, the promises, the blessings of God in your life. It's his provision to your birthright. And inheritance means it's the practice of passing on the privileges and rights. So this is your right to the inheritance. Jesus gave his life, didn't he? And he left the will and he's letting us read the will and telling us what is our inheritance. And he wants us to take a hold of it and give a yes to it and give an amen to it in our lives. You know, the Bible says this church, that we are heirs, joint heirs with Jesus. Uh, we are joint heirs with Jesus and, and, and he wants you to know what he's left for you as an heir, as a child of the living God. And so he's revealed them in the book, the promises, the blessings of God. But you see, if we don't know them and walk in them, how, how can we ever take those blessings into our life? So many people, and of course not any of us, they don't reach out for them with their faith. They don't begin to take hold of them with the words of their mouth and let them start to get into their hearts and begin to anchor inside of their hearts. You know, the Bible says this. I was just pondering on this before I came to share with you this morning. You know, it says, through faith and patience, we inherit the promises of God. Through faith and patience. So we have to be patient as we begin to plant that seed. It's, and Jesus gave us an, an illustration of natural seed as it's planted in the ground. It needs watering. It needs care to be given to it. And that seed, as it goes into the ground, begins to anchor in there. Once it anchors in there and the roots are going out, it's drawing through those roots. And then all of a sudden we find that it begins to break through that soil first. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear, the 30, the 60, the hundredfold. And so we have to have faith in that process. But that word, as you stay with it, will surely come to pass in our life. And remember, I think I shared with you last week, the promise is a declaration that one will do something specified on your behalf. It's a, pro it's a declaration, a promise, a guarantee, an assurance, a covenant. Glory be to God. You know, in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse, let me have a look at this, verse 11. Hebrews 6 and verse 11. 
He says this, we long to see your, you passionately advance until the end and that you find your hope fulfilled. What about that church? God wants every word fulfilled in your life. Glory to God. He takes pleasure. Doesn't the Bible say he takes pleasure in our prosperity? He takes pleasure. He wants the world to see his blessings, his promises working in your life. Glory be to God. He wants you to be a signpost to the world of what God can do in someone's life that will trust him. Hallelujah. And he says, through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. You know, patience means we've got to be steadfast. We're not moved by our emotions, our feelings, or by what we can see or not see right now, but we're steadfast. We believe that that word is going to work mightily in our lives. And it means endurance, that we stay with it. We don't quit. We don't back off from it, not one little bit. We don't take a step back. We go into this promise morning, noon, and night, and we're giving it a yes and amen morning, noon, and night in our life. We don't quit. We continue believing. We continue feeding our faith. That's so important that you go back into it. You continually feed it. And then you pray for the reins of the Spirit, Zechariah 10, 1, to come over that seed that you've sown, that it's got every opportunity for that ground right now that it's planted in to, to receive it and then for it to begin to, to release what it's carrying in our lives in Jesus' name. So we continue to believe. We continue to feed our faith. We're continuing to speak that promise, that blessing, blessing over our life. You know, I go into the blessings most days. Father, thank you that as for us and our everyone in our churches, our online church, our church in Doncaster and Mill Park, we thank you, Father, that the blessings of the Lord make us truly rich, spirit, soul, and body, financially and socially, and you add no sorrow to it, that we're blessed coming into the day. Everything we put our hands to is blessed. Everything we employ our labor to is blessed for the glory of God in Jesus' name. But we have to be obedient, you know. It's through faith and patience, but everything too is by our obedience. We plant it and then we begin to speak over it. We begin to call the reins of the Spirit, come over that seed. So it has every opportunity to settle into our heart, the place that it's meant to be. You know, do you remember in the scriptures when Noah, he heard God speak to him about a flood in a place that hadn't seen rain, <laughs> in a place that hadn't seen rain for such a long, long, long time. And he said, a flood is coming. And he said to Noah, I want you to build an ark. Can you imagine some things that God tells you to do that are so contrary to where we are or what we're experiencing? Like Joshua, walk around the walls six days and don't say anything. And on the seventh day, shout and those walls will come down. I mean, to their military leaders of that day, that must have sounded, how can this possibly work? How can these walls that are so big, so solid, that even even chariots are going around them. How can that be? But if God has given you a word and you keep a hold of that word, you don't lose sight on that word, then the walls are going to come down. Hallelujah. So he receives this word and he believes this word and he shares this word with his family. And then there's the preparation like all of us. He has to stay with it as he's building it into his heart and building that ark. And he's got people laughing at him, making fun of him. And some of us, you know, when we stand and people say, how are you today? You know, sometimes we just say, well, we're doing well and we believe we're going from strength to strength. Sometimes they look at you because they can see that there's a bit of struggle on your flesh. But, and sometimes 
sometimes they'll go home and maybe they'll have a laugh at you. But do you know when they see the full corn in the ear, they'll stop laughing. If we don't quit, if we don't let go of that promise we've just invested into our hearts and let it have every opportunity to triumph in us and bring forth its fruit in Jesus' name. You know, there's a, always a time. There was a time between Noah receiving that word and the flood coming. And there's a time between us receiving the word and the fruit coming in our lives. A flood, a flood. You know, I've been thinking about the flood and I thought, wow, Father, I really believe that we're in for a flood of blessings. You've got us so focused on the blessings, so focused on the promises of God that I believe that we need to put our faith out for a flood of strength in our bodies, a flood of victory. Amen in Jesus' name. Do you know Noah was so glad when that flood came that he stood he stood against the opposition. He stood against people laughing at him. He stood against people that didn't understand him. That how could you be building something like this when we haven't seen any rain? But he built it. And, and, and remember Joshua, when he receives the word of God, I'm sure that his generals and his, and his uh, captains in the army uh, were looking at him like, are, are you for real? Walk around the walls and do nothing. And then on the seventh day shout these walls are going to come down they may have thought that but glory to God they didn't say it but they, I mean you thinking it even walking around those walls they may have had a thought but God told them don't say anything and they didn't until that seventh day and that wall came down right be before them. Glory to God. And we should, you know, regardless of what people say to us, we don't say anything. We only say, we only speak what the word is speaking to us. Glory to God. Even if that pain seems to increase, even if that problem seems to have got worse, no, we've invested the promise. We've invested the blessings of God. We give it a yes and an amen. And we're going to be like, like Wigglesworth. Remember he said, I'm not moved by how I feel. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm moved only by the word of God. So, you know, sometimes we've got to go dive into this the way that Abraham, it says he plunged into the promises of God in Romans 4 in the Message Bible. And we have to do that because it, what that does is it cuts off all those voices around you. It cuts off them telling you to look Look at this, feel that. And they're telling you nothing's working. No, you get into that word and let that word get into you. And then you begin to lift your hands and say, Father, I thank you that your word is working in me. It's working mightily. I thank you for the reins of the spirit coming down on my heart this day in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. I'm so glad. I bet they were thrilled that they listened to God when those floods began to come that they prefer that they prepared they stood that through their faith and patience that flood is coming and Noah and his family were saved glory be to God he inherited that promise of his life being saved and the life of his family he didn't quit we can't quit he didn't stop. We can't stop. He didn't. He held on to the promise of God, and we have to hold on to it. And you know how you have to hold on to it? You have to guard your heart. You have to guard your heart because all those negative voices of the enemy come. The, and, and the pain can be telling you it's increasing, it's not getting better. The situations can be speaking to you, but you guard your heart and you keep the promise strong before your eyes. You keep it strong being spoken out of your mouth. What about the promise of your family being saved, being healed, being delivered? You know, in Acts 16 and verse 31, you and your household shall be saved. Some people grew up in families that have loved God. 
They grew up in a Christian home with families that loved God, went to church, knew the word of God. Other Others, we got born again and we had to grow in those things. We had to stand and believe and stand for our families uh, and praise the Lord. You know, God is moved in, in our families. And today you may be standing on a promise for your health for restoration of a function in some part of your body. You know, and thank God there are instant healings, but there's also healings that are a process. Remember the Bible says, as they went, they were healed. So there's some healings that are a process in our life, but regardless, it's important to stand. Remember in Ephesians 6 and verse from verse 10, it says, having done all, stand. And then it goes on and it says, tighten the belt of truth. What does that mean? Get yourself strong in the word of God because the enemy will challenge that word. He'll challenge you. So you have to tighten the belt of truth. You have to tighten those promises in your heart. So even if you sway a bit, you don't let go. You continue to speak it. You continue to feed that word into your heart and you continue to guard your heart in Jesus' name. And having done all, that's what it says in the book of Ephesians from in ch chapter 6 from verse 10. Having done all the crisis demands, stand and stand firm in Jesus name. You may sway a little bit, but you stand firm in that promise. We're not moved by what we see, that we know that word's gone in. We know there's potential in that word for miracles, for healings, for prosperity, for a supernatural turnaround. So we are not letting go of the possibility of, an, of that impossibility becoming possible in our lives lives in Jesus name and thank God you know we declare don't we by the blood of Jesus I call my body healed by the blood of Jesus I believe he sent his word I've received that word I believe my body is coming in line with that word with that promise in Jesus name you know in Psalm 37 let's go there I'm trusting that you really get in a lot from this teaching, even putting it together and then sharing it. I'm getting so much from it. I'm getting so stirred up in the promises of God and in the blessings of God. And I'm sure that you can hear that even this morning. Psalm 34, what does he say here? Psalm 34, he says, wait, Eileen, for and expect the Lord and keep and heed his way and he will exalt you to inherit the land in the end. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He will exalt you to inherit the promise, the land, the victory in Jesus name. Glory be to God. So through faith and patience, really, in our life, they're two keys in our life, aren't they? Remember in, in the Bible, we know that he says, I'll give you keys to the kingdom. And he goes on and talks about the prayer of binding and loosing. But we're not doing the scripture any misjustice by saying this. These are keys. It's a key thing for us to keep faith and patience because we want to inherit that blessing, whether it's in our body, our finances, our marriage, our children, in our job, in our business. It, we want to see that manifested for his glory. And, you know, Deuteronomy in verse 28, I think it could be verse 7 or 10. But, you know, he says in there, he wants people to see that we're blessed. He wants people in that world to see those promises manifesting in your life, to see the blessing of God, the increase of God, the grace of God, his favor surrounding you and I. He wants the world to see that because he wants them to be drawn by that. We become his sign, signposts. Look at what the Lord can do when you put your trust and your faith in him. You know, the promises of God are yes and amen. 
And all they need is our agreement, our yes, and our amen. You know, Psalm 27 of, uh, in the Amplified Bible, it says, The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Father, thank you. Thank you that you're so good to us. Thank you for your word, Father. Thank you for that word that it is working mightily. That word is working. It's triumph. It's uh, triumphing over sickness and disease. It's triumphing over poverty and lack. Oh, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you it carries your breath. We thank you that it's alive and active. It's energizing and it's having an effect where that we've invested it into in the name of Jesus. You start off saying, Lord, you're my strength. You're my deliverer. You're the strength of my life. Glory be to God. And many people, you know, start off doing that. Oh, Lord, you're the strength of my life. You're the victory in my life. You're the deliverer in my life. Oh, glory to God. And then some, after a day or two, and of course, not any of us. Isn't that right? Not any of us, but some after a day or two start saying, I'm just weary. I'm worn out. I don't think anything is changing. Well, who told you that? There's only one that would tell you that. And that's the enemy of your faith. He doesn't want your faith working. Your faith is challenging to him. And he says in Hebrews, let's go to Hebrews 10. Don't listen to him. Stand your ground. If you've got to put your foot down and say, no, that word's working mightily in me. And I don't care what everything else says. I believe that his word is working mightily in me. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And you challenge him with your faith. In Hebrews 10, and let's have a look at these two verses here. He says in verse 10, verse 35, he says, Do not therefore fling away your fearless confidence, for it carries a great and a glorious reward, a glorious harvest, so don't fling it away. For you have need of steadfast patience and endurance so that you may perform and fully accomplish the will of God and thus receive and carry away and enjoy to full to the full what is promised. Oh, hallelujah. For in a little while, a very little while, the coming one will come and he will not delay. And then he finishes in, in verse 38 with this, and the just shall live by faith. We live by faith in his promises. Glory be to God. And he said, don't cast away your faith. Church, listen to this this morning in the Amplified Bible. It says, oh, sorry, not the Amplified, the Passion Bible. I just read from the Amplified Bible to you. But in Hebrews 10, 35, in the Passion Bible, it says, don't lose your bold, courageous faith. For you are destined for a great reward. Oh my goodness, we're destined for a great reward. Maybe we just need to say that all day to ourselves. We're destined for a reward in this. For you are destined for a great reward. You need the strength and endurance to reveal the poetry of God's will. And then you will receive the promise in full in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, we may not understand how it's working, but we know your promise says it is working. You know, in the, in the Message Bible, he says this. He says, Eileen, don't throw it all away now. You were sure of yourself that it was a sure thing just because you don't see it yet doesn't mean it isn't working. Doesn't mean it isn't working. Sometimes when the enemy's coming at you, do you know what he's really telling you without saying it? That it is working and it's challenging him. You know, it, t it tells us this, that the word, the promise of God prevails. And I looked up these scriptures because I wanted to share them with you this morning.
It says in Acts 19 verse 20, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So I just say so mightily is growing the word of God in me and prevailing. You know, that word mightily means exceedingly huge, forcefully is growing that word and it prevails. What does that mean? It triumphs, it succeeds, it conquers, it overcomes and it reigns over anything that's trying to take anything from your life, from your finances, from your marriage. So we could say so mightily grew the word of God in me on healing and it's prevailing over all sickness, over all disease, over any virus and over any infection in Jesus' name. It's prevailing. It's triumphing over them. It's conquering it in Jesus' name. You know, another translation says this, the Lord's word grew abundantly and strengthened and built us up. Now that word that his word grew abundantly means it's exceptionally Glory be to God. We're amply supplied and, and it strengthens us. What does that mean? It's having an influence. It's vigorous. It's forceful and it builds us up. So what is it doing in there? It's nourishing us. It's reinforcing us to become stronger and stronger in Jesus' name. Oh my goodness. I love something that Cole Stringer said. If this doesn't make you get happy, then your wood is wet. Do you remember? him sharing that. He, he's such an awesome man of God. I'm looking forward to him coming and sharing with us again. But so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. My goodness, that word grows in us as we begin to bring a water in. Remember one sows, one waters, but God brings the increase. That word is going to come up. Don't let go of it. Through faith and patience, we inherit the promise of God. Glory be to God. So let we need to get back to the promise book and feed in this book. Write down those promises and every day steer your heart in them. Keep them in your eyes. What does it say in Proverbs 4? My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears unto my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why would we do that, Father? Because they are life, they're health, they're medicine to all our flesh. So they're going to bring life into our finances life into our body, life if you're standing for your marriage or a child. But we've got to stay with that word and give it every opportunity to start coming up in Jesus' name in that situation. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not working. You know, the Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. Let us begin to speak out that word. Father, thank you. So mightily is growing that word of God in me and prevailing, it prevailing. It's succeeding so mightily as I speak that word over a marriage, over a child, is that word prevailing. You know, the devil will have you look at your child and, and, and say, look, nothing's changing. And you know what? The reason he's coming to you is because something is changing and he's challenging you and he's trying to challenge you about your faith. He's always after our faith because our faith challenges him in Jesus' name. Oh, God is the strength of our life. We're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Your strength isn't built or based on circumstances. It's based on your relationship with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, wasn't it uh, Jerry Savelle that taught years ago, if the devil can't steal your joy, he can't rob your strength. And we, what gives you joy is going over these promises, rehearsing them, speaking them, going to sleep, listening to them, because you're building them stronger and stronger on the inside of you. Hallelujah. You know, some people say, well, pastor, I don't really have a reason to rejoice in the Lord. 
You know, I, I haven't seen the promise come to pass yet. I haven't seen it come to pass in my child, in my family, or in this situation. How can I be rejoicing? Well, I'm so glad we brought that up today. We can rejoice because God has promised in his word that he's faithful, that he's a faithful God. Can you say amen? You know, that word faithful, listen to it. Faithful means true to one's word, a promise, a vow to be loyal, constant and reliable. That's what God is in our life. God is faithful. And he's good and his loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness is to all generations. You'll find that in Psalm 100, glory to God. Let me just go here and read this to you. Let me get there ahead of you and then I'll tell you where it is. <laughs> in Revelation 19 and verse 11. It says, after I saw the heaven opened and behold, a white horse appeared. The one who was riding it is called faithful. He's called trustworthy, loyal, incorruptible, steady and true. Oh my goodness. And he is the Lord of the breakthrough. In Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 9, it says exactly the same. Psalm 37 and verse 3 says, feed on his faithfulness and surely you will be fed. You know, in the Passion Bible, it says, keep trusting in the Lord and do what is right in his eyes. Fix your heart on the promise of God and you will dwell in the land feasting on his faithfulness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that you are faithful. Thank you that you are trustworthy. And when you've given us a word, that you want that word even more than we do to come to pass in our lives. So we praise you this morning and give you the glory. You know, we need, that's what Abraham did, church. You know, I, I think I shared it with you last week in Romans 4. It said Abraham never wavered because of unbelief. How did he stay strong? God had given him a word that he was going to have this child. So how did he stay strong? The Bible says by giving glory to God. You know, as you begin to spend time giving glory to God, you know what that's doing? It's lifting all your focus off everything around you and keeping your focus steady on the Lord. It's keeping your focus on the one that is loyal and faithful and steadfast and constant in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You know, wherever you are today... God wants to do something greater in your life and in my life. Hallelujah. He wants to do something greater. That's what he told Nehemiah. It's sorry, not Nehemiah. He told them in the Bible, he said, you are going to see greater things than these. And I believe that. And he says in Ephesians 3.20 that my God is able. So I put all my trust in your ability and in the ability of that word, Father, that you are able to do in and through us exceedingly abundantly, far over and above all that we could ever ask or think according to your word, to your promise. We thank you for it, Father. We put our faith in your power to bring it to pass in our lives in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Father, I thank you for everyone that has joined us this morning. We pray that as they take hold of a promise in your word, as they keep hold of that promise, that that word will prevail in their lives. It will prevail over sickness. It will prevail over disease. It will prevail over infections and viruses. It will prevail over poverty and lack in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the promise for our children, that as we hold fast to that promise, that that word is prevailing in their hearts, prevailing in their 
their lives in Jesus' name. We believe in you, Father, and we believe in your faithfulness to bring your word to pass in our lives in Jesus' name. And we give you all the glory this morning. And Father, for anyone that's facing sickness right now, facing any weakness in their body, weakness in their limbs, we command strength to come into their body, strength to come into their limbs in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> and I see someone in a wheelchair right now. And right now in the name of Jesus, we command you to arise strong in the Lord and in the power of your might, his might. If I call you to get out of that wheelchair and start to walk in Jesus' name. And we call strength into your muscles, strength into your bones, strength into your feet, strength into your legs, strength into your body in the name of Jesus. We we call you out of that wheelchair, healed, whole, and free in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, right now that the Word of God is prevailing over the muscle, the tissue in their body, in their legs, in their muscles, in their strength right now for your glory in Jesus' name. Oh, we call you out. We call you to run now and not get weary, to walk and not even faint for the glory of God. And as you take hold of that, God will take hold with you and you will see a miracle break through in your body today in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Wow. My goodness, Father. Thank you. Praise you. And as we close this morning, if you joined us and you've never, never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, do you know I want to tell you something right now? God loves you even though you might know, not know him. He knows you and he's loved you even when you were a seed in the womb of your mother. He loves you. He's for you. He's not against you. And you know what he wants more than anything? For you to receive his promise of eternal life with him. How can you receive that promise, you might be saying? You receive it this way. Lord, I believe that Jesus came to this earth, that he died for me, he was buried for me, and that you raised him up from death, hell, and the grave for me. And I'm asking you, Jesus, to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. And if you've just done that, you've just received the promise of eternal life with God, that one day when you leave this earth, you'll be forever with him in heaven. Glory to God. And if you've received him today as Lord, we're asking you to contact us at the church. All the details are on the bottom of the screen and we'll send you out some information and we'll also be able to be praying for you as you start to walk in this journey that you've just engaged in. Well, you all have a wonderful weekend and remember that God loves you, that you're the apple of his eye. And if you're in Melbourne next week, it's going to be a big week. You can join us at the healing meeting on Wednesday night, 7.30 on Facebook and YouTube. And we'll be looking for you. Glory to God. And on Thursday at the Eagles at 7.30 again on Facebook and YouTube. And if you do happen to be in Melbourne, you can join us at Rayma Melbourne, uh, sorry, Rayma Doncaster at 10 a.m. and Rayma Mill Park at 6 p.m. You have a wonderful day and just remember today that God loves you and his eyes are on you for his glory in Jesus' name. And those who wait on the Lord Shall renew their strength And they shall rise up with wings As eagles They shall run and not grow weary They shall walk and win
they shall run.